the question was, um, what's my theory or my favorite theory on how I can see number six in my head? And uh, the second part of the question is, when I was playing uh, Baltar in her head, how, how did I approach that? Um, uh, I started to read some physics books. Um, there's uh, an interesting book by a guy called, I think it's Michio Kaku, uh, it's called Parallel Worlds or Universes. And it's got this, I like to think that kind of she's there in kind of a different reality, a different universe that I'm kind of in touch with. And uh, when you read some of these uh, physics books, it's not so science fiction. Apparently, like, there are parallel universes, perhaps, all around us, just slightly beyond uh, uh, the tangibility of our grip. And uh, rather than kind of a mind meld or anything, it's like uh, they do exist, just kind of slightly beyond the frame of reference that everybody else can see. So that's my particular theory. <laughs> I'm sure it's wrong. Uh, and uh, as I approached the second one, well, it was just like, you know, oh, like, uh, finally this guy's got his shit together. Uh, the, the guy who's in her head. I don't have to be worried and nervous and scampering about for my own life. It's uh, essentially like he's got his balls back. And that was about the only note I gave to myself. Hmm, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, how many, I mean, has it gone sport? You know, we're not in the States. In, in the States, it's going spoiler crazy at the moment in the sense of that I think that the first two episodes have gone to other press already. Um, we begin season three with the Colonials living under Cylon occupation. And uh, if the Colonials thought that it was tough when they were in space, then they have got like another thing coming to them when they're down on the planet. Um, it's like living in a police state regime, or like Vichy farms. People disappear in the middle of the night. People are tortured. People are killed. People disappear. Um, Baltar himself has little or no allies, and is kind of, in some way, fully aware that he's a kind of totem for human loathing. But that's because I think everybody outside Colonial One, or the coziness of Colonial One, assumes that he's just you know, oh, of course, Cylons, of course, yes, yes, yes. Uh, which isn't really what he's doing at all. He's in, um, he's like under the thumb. There's like very little leeway that he has to maneuver or do anything. And what I find in the, in, in the, in the beginning of this show is the amount of people who are like, where can I find so-and-so? They've been abducted, they've been taken away. And every single one of us like passes the buck. It's not, it's not me, it's a special ministry. I, I don't have access to everyone. Um, it's, it's like the coming of age of Battlestar Galactica this particular season. Uh, there's really nothing darker or, or more intense. And um, actually after I watched it, I just, um, I just like clicked it off at the end and just stared at the blank screen for like 10 minutes. And you don't want to talk to people. You won't want to ring up your buddies, I think. You just want to kind of let it sit there before you have that burning thing about when is the next episode coming out and how is this going to resolve itself. Collectively, the show has matured. It's my phone. How awful. <laughs> What's really funny is when you have that on set, there's always like, no mobile phones, no mobile phones. You're doing a very, very big scene. It's always the director's phone that goes off. Uh, so hopefully that won't go off again. Uh, Lee's fat. <laughs> Jamie Bamber gives the most astonishing performance this year. It's really, really amazing. You're looking at somebody, again, who's gone through a turmoil and a crisis, because we've jumped over the year, and then there will be later on in the season, you'll find out why people are behaving in ways to each other, because they're going to go look back retrospectively at, uh, you know, the nasty and vindictive things that people did to each other, in, in that break. Um, I myself am, I, I think it's fair to say, I'm abducted. And, uh, yeah, spend a long, long while away from uh, both my friends and enemies on, on Galactica. Um, and get back there for a long while. Uh, so, uh, that's a spoiler. <laughs> or, uh, where have you seen up to in the show? 
Uh, no, but you've seen up to the end of uh, the second season. Wow. Um, one second, let's just turn this thing off. Um, they're kind of, uh, they're waiting. They're waiting for their moment. Uh, and they're fully aware that if they strike at the wrong moment with their force that is totally dwarfed by the silence, then it's the death of everybody. So they're in this awful, they're in another awful position. Um, they're waiting for news. They're waiting to try and get back to help, knowing really that they can't get back and help, uh, which causes lots of rows and arguments. And the Galactica, because like it's been a year out, you know, um, everything has become rather lax in space. It's not like this, uh, all, all, all of the kind of cream of the military units, they're all down on the planet. Everybody wanted to be down on the planet. So it's like a skeleton force that are on those ships. And, uh, you know, the dress code has become more lax. People's interactions with each other show that they've just been like sitting around in space for a year. That's maybe like four. Um, <laughs> how many new models of Cylons do we get to see in the first 10 episodes of uh, season three? Can't tell you. Oh. Can't tell, won't tell. Somebody back over there. That's you. And Gator has certainly become Baltar's A and uh, is, is pretty sick with himself in the position that he finds himself in. But he's again another one of these people who's like, listen, we can say that there's no game when we don't play, and we're just going to end up like with a bullet in the head. But there might be a way of you know, policing our own state that then um, ameliorates the threat of the Cylon force. But all of these people will be seen as collaborators. And uh, when push comes to shove, and when as it looks like the universe might right itself, the decisions that you have made down on the planet uh, w will affect your life and death, because certainly nobody else is going to forget what side they think you were on.